So the next step is to actually draw the fractal itself. But before we can do that, we need some way of determining whether some point or some pixel on our canvas is within the fractal or specifically the Mandelbrot set itself. If you go back and watch the first video, you'll see that we we do an infinite number of iterations to determine whether a point is within the set or not. Unfortunately, this is not feasible. We're going to have to do a finite number of iterations and then determine whether or not our point is within the set. So let's declare a new variable. Static final int. Now I'm going to call it max iter for maximum number of iterations. And I'm going to set it to 200. Um, this may be a lot if your computer runs slowly. Feel free to lower it to 100 or 150. And this is the maximum number of iterations we're going to do before we determine whether this point is or is not within the set. So next, let's make a method. Um, called uh, compute iterations and actually it's not going to be a void it's going to return an int, int compute iterations and this method is going to take the complex number C so the way we're going to do this is we're going to have the real part of C, so C underscore R, and the imaginary part of C, since it's a complex number. Now before we write any code, I just want to do some algebra so that we're all on the same page. So, so I'm going to let C equals C of R plus C of I because it's a complex number. And I'm also going to let z, the other complex number, equal to z r, so the real part of z, and z of i, the imaginary part of z. Now, by our formula, we know that z prime equals z multiplied by z, or, or z squared, oh, like this. But I'm going to write it as two multiplication signs, you'll see why, plus c. So this actually equals, so if we do a simple copy paste, like this. And we know that c is right over here. Now, we're going to have to keep in mind that i squared is negative 1. Because here we're going to have z i multiplied by z of i. So if we multiply everything together, here's what we're going to end up getting. And if we decide to simplify this, then here's what we can obtain. So in the end, we obtain a formula, in a sense, for the real part of z and the imaginary part of z. So now if you remember from the first video, what we actually care about is if the distance from the origin of the new complex point we obtained, so z prime, is less than or or equal to some value and that the value I chose was 2. Now let me show you how to do that. So first we're going to need the initial values of z. Thankfully we already know them. We already know what z0 is. z0 is 0. So you can set z of r and z of i to be 0. This method returns an integer, and that integer is going to be the, 
the number of iterations. I'm going to call that iter count. Now, to calculate the modulus or the distance to the origin, we can use this formula a squared plus b squared is less than or equal to 2, where a and b are the, the real and the imaginary parts of a complex number. Since we don't want to calculate square roots, since calculating square roots can be somewhat slow, we're going to square this equation. And now we don't have to calculate any more square roots, so we're checking if a squared plus b squared is less than or equal to 4. So let's do that. Now, you can just substitute a and b to be z of r and z of i. So, z of r multiplied by z of r plus z of i multiplied by z of i is less than or equal to 4. So, we're going to need to store z of r temporarily because we're going to override this value. So z of r, if we look up above, z of r prime is z of r squared plus c. Actually, let's copy these two lines. Let's paste them here. Well, z of r prime is just z of r, and z of i prime is just z of i. Since this is square, we need to get rid of that. Put z of r here as z of i. And we're going to need to replace this one by z of r temp. Because this, the value of z of r on line 57, is not the same as the value of z of r on line 58. Our next step is actually checking whether our point is in the Mandelbrot set or not. So, if the number of iterations is greater than or equal to the maximum number of iterations, then we know that the point was inside the Mandelbrot set and we can simply return the maximum number of iterations here. Otherwise, we can increment our counter. However, if the while loops, the while loop breaks early, then we know that the complex point C that we chose was outside the Mandelbrot set. And we can, we're interested in the number of iterations it did before it broke out of the while loop. And that's all there is to this, this function. It's probably the most sophisticated function we are going to have in this program. Uh, so guys, thank you for sticking along. Um, I promise we'll have our fractal up and displaying quite soon. Thank you for watching.